Hello, my name is Janet Coyle and I would like to share with you today some of the business opportunities that are associated with the staging of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Here in London, we're very proud to be hosting the Olympic and Paralympic Games in just over a year from now. And everything associated with the Games is absolutely huge, whether it's the 205 countries taking part, whether it's the 17,000 athletes, or whether it's the sheer amount of business that's, that's open to companies all over the world. So what I plan to do today is just highlight sort of three key areas around business. One is those business opportunities that are associated directly with the games that will be staged in the Olympic Park and the other venues. The other area is the opportunities outside of the immediate Olympic venues, those that are right across London. And the third area I would like to touch on is the legacy of the games and looking ahead beyond 2012. Now, first of all, I would just like to, to highlight to all of you just where the Games are going to take place. There's much talk at the moment about the, the fantastic Olympic Park, where the five permanent venues uh, are almost finished, actually, in, in the Stratford area. And you can see from this map um, the, sort of the cluster of Games that are going to take, be taking place in Stratford. But there's 33 other venues right across London that will be hosting the Games, from the archery that will be um, taking place at Lord's Cricket Ground through to Wembley where quite naturally a lot of the football will be taking place. And there's venues right across the UK up in Manchester and Glasgow and the sailing down in Weymouth. So if you're a business and you're thinking about supplying any part of the Games, um, I would ask you just to think about the whole breadth of venues where the Games will be taking place. I would also like to share with you just the structure of who's actually organising this amazing feat in, in, in 2012. So you've got the International Olympic Committee, which most of you will have heard of, as they're the body that actually identifies which city is going to play host to the Games. The other two very important organisations to be aware of as a business is the Olympic Delivery Authority and the London Organising Committee of the Games. Now, the Olympic Delivery Authority is really responsible for sort of spending the, the government funding, the £9.3 billion that we all hear about. And they're responsible for, if you like, building, building the theatre, building the stage, building those permanent structures that we've seen sort of rapidly go up in the Olympic Park. The organising committee of the Games, it's chaired by Lord Coe, is responsible for securing its own funding of £2 billion and they're responsible for, if you like, putting on the show. So everything from merchandising, from selling the tickets, from all the operational requirements for, for the athletes themselves and making sure that the greatest show on earth actually runs like clockwork in 2012. So we have a very good relationship with both LOCOG um, and the Olympic Delivery Authority because we, we've been very keen over the last two to three years to really understand what's in it for business. So let me just explain the categories that London, the London Organising Committee has actually broken their procurement into. So for those of you who are in the sort of creative space, there's a category for artists, performance and events. There's one for sports, one for technology, one for security, services, transport and logistics, venues and infrastructure and the facilities management and catering for those of you who've got technology maybe in the catering space. Now there's still 450 million pounds worth of direct contracts, contracts available, but in addition to those, there's a huge amount of supply chain opportunities with contracts that are coming out of the Olympic Delivery Authority business opportunities and also from the London Organising Committee of the Game, Games opportunities. Now these supply chain opportunities are all, most of them, being published on an online procurement tool which is called Compete4. Now Compete4 offers complete transparency around procurement for the Olympic and Paralympic Games and it acts a bit like a marriage broker if you like, so buyers who have actually got products to procure will register themselves and currently there's over 600 buyers registered on this site. And companies interested in actually selling their products and services also register on the site. And then there's some software that sits behind it that matches the two together. So it's very, very straightforward to complete, about, about 30 minutes to, come to register your company. And I would also encourage you to publish your business profile. Many companies 
go on and register on Compete4 and then they forget to actually publish their business profile and then they don't get all the alerts about business opportunities. Now LOCOG, the organising committee of the games, every, every month they, they publish a procurement timeline. So we have that on our website so you can actually access that very easily and see which business opportunities are going to be coming up. So we know, for example, at the moment, there's, there's likely to be some opportunities around mobile technologies for those of you who are in that space. I'd now like to move on to broader opportunities outside of the games themselves, because London is really ramping up to prepare to actually deliver not just um, the greatest show on earth in terms of the sporting events in the Olympic Park and all the other venues that I mentioned, but also to make sure that we give the best possible welcome to all our visitors when they arrive in London in 2012. So the opportunities for a business that you need to really start thinking about are things like the torch relay that's going to be taking place right across the UK in the lead up to the Games. Now with that torch relay comes a huge array of entertainment, of concerts, of shows in each city as the torch relay actually travels through the United Kingdom. So that's an opportunity for you to think about if you're in the creative or entertainment space. There's also the live sites. Any of you who've actually been part of an Olympic Games in the past will be aware of these sort of huge screens that are put up right across the country. Now the UK has already got 18 very large sort of plasma screens in place across the country and really ready to embrace the whole spirit of the Games. So with these live sites will come sort of staging of shows, of festivals, of music and entertainment. So again, that also offers a great opportunity for businesses in that space. There's also a volunteering program that some of you may have already um, become aware of. Where, where London and LOCOG are both looking to secure a huge number of volunteers. So around 70,000 volunteers are needed for the organising committee and about 8,000 volunteers for the Mayor of London in order to sort of place in, in sites right across London. And now turning to legacy, which for me is one of the most exciting parts of the 2012 Games. Legacy has been very much at the heart of the London 2012 strategy right from the beginning when they won the bid in Singapore in 2005. And I'm delighted that London 2012 are actually keeping their commitment to regenerate this whole part of East London, particularly around the Stratford area. Now from our office window we can actually see the whole regeneration taking place and a very sort of shift in the landscape in that part of East London, which is all very exciting. Now, the name of the Olympic Park post-games time is going to be the, called the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park and the vision for the park in legacy can really be explained in, in, in four areas. So the first area, which is obviously very, very important to the athletes, is keeping that sporting legacy and actually making sure that many of the venues, including the Aquatic Centre and the Velodrome for Cycling, will be used for both elite sport and public community sport post-games time. Now the other area is the building of communities, education, healthcare facilities, and really trying to drive these communities into the Olympic Park to make sure that they maintain that whole momentum and the buzz beyond the Olympic Games themselves. The third area is a real visitor attraction that they're looking to really develop and create in the Olympic Park. And we already will have the orbit, we'll have the parkways, we'll have the waterways in the Olympic Park. But they're also looking at what festivals, what concerts, what other types of sort of real visitor destinations can be attractive to people when they come to visit London. And the fourth area, which is probably one of the most important areas for you today, is the whole business hub that they're looking to generate in the Olympic Park, and particularly around the Media Press Centre and the Broadcast Centre that's going to be there during games time. They're going to be refitting these, these buildings and really making it attractive for businesses to come and actually set up there after the games. And the other good thing about this whole business hub is the way it'll be very... In, in close proximity to the whole Hackney area which has a whole wealth of creative talent and there won't be any borders up between the Olympic Park and the area of Hackney, instead they'll be building bridges. So it'll make it completely open 
and um, really helped to sort of nurture that whole creative community in that part of East London. So I hope you've actually got a sense of the whole wealth of business opportunities that exist here in London, both now, during games time and beyond into legacy. Please don't hesitate to get in touch if you'd like any more detail around any of these specific business opportunities. Thank you.